Welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio, and it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. It's much appreciated. On the start, I want to say welcome to all of you who are new members. Thank you very much for subscribing to the channel, giving this channel um, a chance, and I hope you will continue to enjoy the content. I hope to continue to see you commenting, liking, and um, maybe also sharing so other like-minded um, people can come and join our little movement. Thank you so much. I honestly appreciate it. So today we're going to have a, a bit of an interesting episode uh, because I, I wanted to do this for a while and I wanted to kind of look into the psychology of I'm going to use the word that is commonly used in our space, derangers, because this sort of hate, I'm fascinated by, by the why or the how come, because it's, it's a phenomenon that is spreading around the world like, like fire, right? Like, like a bad virus. It's, it's, it's astonishing to me that when truth is presented to you or when the facts that you have don't really fit you still choose to call a circle a square and i have a special guest <laughs> friends of the family um, who <laughs> wanted to actually respond to some of the um comments i, I originally said no but um <laughs> she insisted and I'll bring that to you mind you you know I will have to I think either edit or I will have to not allow certain comments because knowing Rachel she's going to <laughs> she's going to say things that she should not be saying okay so that will likely be um, towards the halfway of the um, episode today so I also don't want to um, start without acknowledging and saying welcome, welcome, welcome back um, to Sussex Sunday Church Service, to Lady Sussex, George, and Charles. I am so excited that you folks are back. When I got the notification about three weeks ago, I was in disbelief. I didn't believe it. And then when I went and checked, I was like, they're back. It is so great to hear your voices. It is so great to hear the discussions that you're, you, you, you're, you're having again. And um, Lady Sussex, I am very, very, very encouraged to hear that your mom is doing better. I continue to pray for her complete recovery and, 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 and for her health. At the same time, you are also included in that because I absolutely know you know, it does. It's it's such a blessing to be able to take care of one's parents, but it's also strenuous on one's mental health, on one's physical health, and so on. So, um, you are also in my prayers, and so is George, and so is Charles. So, thank you, folks. I'm so happy that you're actually back, and I'll have the link to their channel in the description if you're at all interested in sort of the combination of theology and, and, and prophecy, philosophy, and how these things sort of manifest themselves in, in, in our daily life or what's happening today in the news and so on. They are just so fantastic at it. And, you know, they, they do intensive research. They have like articles or books that they recommend and so on. So it was just such a treat. They've just really, on Sundays, it was a must listen and watch for my parents and for me. And we would call each other and then discuss. You know, it was really, really great. So I'm so happy to, um, you folks are back. With all that said, let's start.
Prince Harry does not fit the criteria for the Pat Tillman Award, and I'm shocked that you're trying to give it to him. Give it to an American. It's being paid for by American dollars. Give it to an American who I'm sure there's thousands of people that fit that criteria better than Prince Harry. Clearly, this is a financial payoff for somebody, and it's disgusting. This is a shame for the men and women of the military for Harry to use this as a status symbol for himself. And it's also a disgrace that apparently Harry or some of his buddies has put the flag at the top of this. Just shows you the dishonesty of the whole idea of Harry getting the award. This is outrageous. This person, Harry, who wrote a book and slammed his family horribly, said horrible things about his family, and he couldn't even fly a helicopter. He couldn't pass the test. And he bragged about how many people he killed. You're giving him that award? Do you think he really deserves that? What the hell is going on? Research and observation suggest that the most vocal critics of Harry and Meghan tend to be women often middle-aged or older, so anywhere between 45 to 75, who are active on social media platforms. These individuals frequently engage in behavior such as manipulating photos of Megan to criticize her parents, questioning the authenticity of her pregnancies, and often denying her miscarriage experience. Dr. Sarah Thompson, a social psychologist specializing in online behavior, notes, we're seeing a pattern of intense emotional investment from these women, often coupled with a sense of betrayal. It's as if they feel personally affronted by Harry and Meghan's decisions, particularly their choice to step back from royal duties. The psychology behind the hate. There are several psychological factors that may contribute to this behavior. Parasocial relationships. Many of these women have developed strong one-sided emotional connections to the royal family over years of following their lives. Identity threat. Megan's entry into the royal family and subsequently the departure may be perceived as a threat to long-held ideas about tradition and British identity. Displaced aggression. Personal frustrations and societal anxieties may be projected onto high-profile figures like Harry and Megan. Online anonymity and distance provided by social media can lead to more extreme expressions of negativity. Groupthink and echo chambers. Online communities can reinforce and amplify negative sentiments, creating a cycle of escalating hostility. Dr. Michael Chen, a research in digital media psychology, explains these online spaces can become echo chambers where negative opinions are constantly reinforced the more time individuals spend in these environments the more extreme their views can become the spread of hate towards harry and megan on social media platforms highlights broader issues with online discourse misen harriman a photographer who has worked with the couple has faced accusations of manipulating images, forcing him to defend his work publicly. This incident underscores how quickly misinformation and conspiracy theories can spread online. Social media expert Lisa Rodriguez comments, platforms like Twitter and Facebook have become breeding ground for negativity. The algorithm often prioritizes engagements which can inadvertently promote controversial or inflammatory content. 
The relentless online hatred directed at Harry and Meghan can have severe consequences, not just for the couple, but for society at large. When we look at mental health, for example, constant exposure to negativity can be detrimental to the mental health of both the target and the perpetrator of hate. The normalization of hate speech. Unchecked online vitriol can lead to a broader acceptance of hate speech in society. Chilling effect. Fear of online backlash may discourage others from speaking out on important issues. Erosion of civil discourse. The prevalence of hate speech online can degrade the quality of public debate and discussion. Many of these women exhibit characteristics of extreme loyalty to the traditional image of the British monarchy. They see Meghan as an outsider who has disrupted the sanctity of the royal family. This group often engages in echo chambers on social media platforms where their views are reinforced and amplified by like-minded individuals. Dr. Karen Gillen, a clinical psychologist, explained that this intense hatred often stems from a combination of racial bias, jealousy, and a sense of betrayal. Meghan Markle challenges the traditional norms that these women hold sacred. Her confidence, success, and ability to speak her mind threatens their worldview, leading to a psychological defense mechanism manifesting as hatred, says Dr. Gillen. As a biracial American woman marrying into the British royal family, Megan represents a significant departure from tradition. This has likely triggered latent racist and xenophobic attitudes in some individuals. No kidding. Some of them see her as a threat to tradition. Some view Megan as a disruptive force challenging the established norms of the monarchy, leading to a defensive reaction from those who value these quote unquote traditions. And there's lots of projection and scapegoating. In times of social and political uncertainty, public figures like Megan can become target for people's frustrations and anxieties about broader social changes. Get a life. And of course, media influence. The constant negative coverage in certain segments of the British press has likely shaped and reinforced negative perceptions of Megan. The spread of this hatred on social media is both pervasive and dangerous. These women manipulate photos of Megan to make her appear unattractive or even monstrous, and then criticize her based on these altered images. They're crazy. Crazy. This, this not only perpetuates false narratives, but also dehumanizes Megan, making it easier for others to join in the abuse. Now, one particularly malicious claim that has gained traction is the assertion that Megan was never pregnant. Now, this accusation which has historical roots in the mistrust of black women's reproductive health is both baseless and harmful. By questioning the legitimacy of her pregnancies, these individuals aim to strip Megan of her dignity and humanity. Keep trying, it's not going to happen. The online hate campaign against Meghan Markle exemplifies broader trends in digital harassment and its real-world consequences. Now, Bot Sentinel analysis identified 83 Twitter accounts responsible for 70% of the hateful content targeting the Sussexes, suggesting a coordinated campaign rather than organic sentiment. Social media platforms' algorithms often promote 
divisive or extreme content to increase engagement, inadvertently amplifying hate speech. Now, the normalization of hate, this constant exposure to hateful content online can normalize such behavior, making it seem more acceptable in both digital and real-world contexts. There's a documented link between online hate speech and real-world violence, with several high-profile incidents of white supremacy violence being preceded by online radicalization. Now, all of this has psychological effects, right? It has a psychological impact. So the person who's receiving all this hate and abuse, you know, the, the targets of online hate campaigns can experience severe mental health issues, including depression, anxiety, and wanting to unlive themselves. In perhaps one of the most heartless attacks, some have claimed that Megan never suffered a miscarriage. This denial of her personal tragedy, her personal pain, is not only cruel, but also indicative of a deep-seated need to invalidate her experiences and emotions. Dr. Linda Smith, a social media expert, notes, by denying Megan's miscarriage, these individuals are attempting to erase her narrative and replace it with their own. It's a form of psychological warfare intended to undermine her credibility and strength. The continuous spread of hate against Meghan and Harry poses significant danger. It fosters a toxic environment where misinformation strives and can lead to real-world consequences. This relentless cyberbullying can take a severe toll on the mental health of the targets, in this case, Meghan and Harry. Moreover, this environment of hate can embolden others to act out their prejudices in more tangible ways. The dehumanization and vilification of Meghan Markle have already led to threats and increased security concerns for the couple. And if I'm not mistaken, there are two people in jail right now. Dr. Emily Johnson, a professor of psychology emphasizes the need for social media platforms to take a more active role in curbing this behavior. Social media companies must enforce stricter regulations against hate speech and harassment. The psych psychological impact of such relentless negativity is profound and can lead to long-term mental health issues for the victims, she explained. Additionally, public figures and influencers need to speak out against this kind of behavior. Silence can often be perceived as complicity, and it is crucial to create a counter-narrative that promotes kindness, understanding, and respect. Now, some experts have, have sort of said they, they, they are potential things that can be done, right? And again, these, these, these are potential things. One of them is to improve content moderation. Social media platforms need to invest in more sophisticated tools and human moderators to identify and remove hateful content quickly. And don't tell me they can't do it, and don't tell me they probably already have the technology. Hate makes them a lot of money. Media literacy education, helping people critically evaluate online information could reduce the spread of misinformation and hate speech. Let me tell you how important that is because the messages and comments that this channel gets for the people who keep, and, and they repeat the same things. It's sort of this, this 
I, I, I don't know. It's like they have five or ten things, you know, in their golden book to to talk about Megan, and they just repeat it over and over and over and over, and it just goes in these cycles. And you could take any one of those things and put it through a test of truth and see if it stands up to the truth and to facts, and it doesn't. And it's not that difficult to do. It's quite easy to disprove all of this nonsense. But nah, why do that? Why do that? I am quite happy hating on Princess Diana's son. And I'm quite okay hating on the woman that he chose to be his wife. That's okay to do. Also, the, the, they, they recommend legal framework, developing clear legal guidelines for addressing online hate speech while protecting free speech. Support for people who are being targeted. Providing mental health resources and support networks for those targeted by online hate campaigns. But that does not go far enough. Because they can ban the person from using that um, plat platform. They, the technology exists. The will is just not there. And the excuses are abundant. Right? Now, promoting positive narratives. Actively amplifying diverse voices and positive stories to counter hateful narratives. Now, listen, that... That, that, that one, 100%, 200%, 1,000%. Because for many of us in this space who try our best to put forth positive messaging, who gets penalized? We do. Almost every other months, I would say. All of my videos, all of the videos that were okay, everything is fine, all of a sudden demonetized. I'm like, what? I, I, I went over this already. Why, why, why is it now? De and they'll find some like, I, 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 I <laughs> Maybe a whisper in the background of the video and say, oh, there's a whisper in the background and someone is claiming copyright infringement. I'm like, a whisper in the background? That's just a, that's, 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 that's just a sound effect. So then I have to go through, find all of the, the, the licenses and go through which song and, and try and fig figure out again, like, who did I, which company did I buy the song from? Every, every other month. Now, don't get me wrong, if they were applying the same to every single channel, I'll be fine. But when we look at certain channels that, that they start today, okay, they start today, they have 10 subscribers, and the entire channel is about hate. Hate Megan, hate this, conspiracy theories. Oh, she's this, she's that. Bam, bam, bam. Hate, 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 hate. You go back a week later, they have 44,000 subscribers. 33,000 subscribers. How did that happen? How did it happen? Not only that, you see them sharing like clips from TV shows or clips from this and news this and entire thing. Entire thing, not a problem. Not a problem. Unless they're getting some kind of like special authorization to use those clips in the entirety. Now, we can't, because every time I've tried to do that, they've demonetized like within an hour. They're like, bang, demonetize or take the video down. And usually I will not take the video down. So bam, gone. So the treatment is not the same. 
And if we wonder why the world is the way it is, oh, I've got some other set of research that points the finger at certain people on certain platforms. All right, I think that's it. <laughs> Richard Branson used to give the front of first class to Dinah whenever she was doing a charity trip. And there was someone just behind the, the curtain with a baby crying and screaming. And you could tell that this mother was just on her own. Dinah's kind of looking through the crack in the window and she's like, and she turns to Ken, her bodyguard, and she said, can I, Ken, please, can I just go back there and go and help her? And he said, no, mum, you really can't, you really cannot go through. No one knows you're on this flight. And she turns to my dad and she goes, what, what do you think, Tony? I think, you know. And he's like, well, I mean, I don't really see why there would be a problem. And so she goes through the curtain, opens the curtains up, and Dad just saw these faces kind of wide-eyed at what who had just come through. I think he was a flight attendant or something. Then she goes, can I help you for a minute? I've got more room up there. And she went, <laughs> just passed this baby up. Diana took the baby, went behind the curtain, five minutes later, just walking up and down, just nursing the baby, and fell straight to sleep. Handed the baby back over to the mother, who was now crying her eyes out by this point. And Diana turns and she said, it happens to the best of us. Richard Brown. Dear Lord, we come to you today with open heart, seeking your guidance and grace. We pray for peace and understanding among all your children especially those who harbor anger and hatred in their hearts. May you fill them with love and compassion and help us all to see the humanity in one another. Thank you. Amen. So David F5967. Me got a question for you now before me answer you. Tell me something. Is it um this is poor research and inaccurate? Are you saying that um Antonio stuff is in a bad research and inaccurate? Or are you saying that like, like like Dia the person, the man over there ta attacking all those lies? Because let me tell you something. Antonio didn't have to research nothing. The man talking all these lies, all Antonio's doing is answering him back. Oh my gosh, David F. David F., you're kind of stupid, you know. De la Z, or De la Z, or whatever. Let me tell you something now. You're really lucky Antonio told me not to say what I really want to say to you. But let me tell you something. Do you have a man in your life? No, no, no. I honestly, answer me. Do you have a man in your life? Because you sound very frustrated. Now, let me tell you something else. You need to take a bar of soap, put it in your mouth, and wash your mouth. Because if you come in other people's channel and you're talking like this, oh my goodness gracious, this is not the proper language, you know. You don't even have a channel or whatever. You go on somebody else's channel and saying nonsense and insulting and all that kind of stuff. Listen. Take a bar of soap, put it in your mouth, or wash your mouth out, and then take the same bar of soap and wash the rest of you because, let's say, you're, 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 you're nasty. You're really, really nasty. And you lucky. you lucky that's all he's, he's letting me say, you know. Because, look, I will tell you some things. Will you? So, Aaron Campbell. I am Campbell. You know, I me mean, never feel like answering you, you know. Because, like, you're just, you're just coming to class as really, really stupid and dumb. So, you know what? I'm not, not going to even answer you. Because it, the, the, I'm not even going to. Let me go to the next one. Who's the next one? Queenie T. Oh, me like that name, you know? Queenie T. Let me see where you... Oh, Queenie. There you go. You tell us pilot for me now. You totally file it for me. Now, who do you think should receive your award? Let me tell you something. I think you already have your narrative in your head. You already want to already think what you think. So no matter what I say to you, you're not going to be convinced about nothing. You're going to tell me that the man doesn't, doesn't deserve your award. The man went to fight for his country. The man know how to fight helicopter and all this stuff. But his life in danger. 
Do you see the other one, the other vials do anything, anything like that? They get put their life in danger. You know, you're stupid. You need to stop listening to all these stupid people saying little stupid things, you know. Come on, use your common sense. Do you have any common sense, greeny tea? Read or read something, read other stuff for the listen to these stupid people. And uh, listen to it, tell you something. That man can talk about his, his, his mother as long as he wants to talk about his mother. You have your mother die when you were 13 years old and they forced you to walk behind her casket. I mean, uh, answer me. You don't have no right telling that man he can't talk about his mother. You people really disgusted and stupid, you know. You have no feelings, you have nothing. Uh. Adelma Bishop. Okay, Adelma Bishop, pay me something. Define the word disgrace for me. Define it. How, how do you define the word disgrace? Because I think you and I might have a different definition for it, you know. Because let me tell you what, what them disgrace means, okay? Disgrace means loss of reputation or respect as the result of a dishonorable action. That man and his wife haven't done anything dishonorable. Nothing at all. You find me something dishonorable, and I will agree with you then. But you can't find me one. Anything you come up with is going to be either invented or you hold it from one of these lamb, royal rota people. But just infantilize all the time. And let me tell you, if you're going to tell me, oh, he disgraced his family, then you, you're more than stupid. Because let me tell you something, you know. You mean to tell me that you want that man and his wife to stay in that disgusting, abusive family? Look what they lip Diana. What? My visit the allegedly? Okay, allegedly. Look what they lip Diana. Now, were you one of those people who were crying and saying, oh my God, Diana died and all that kind of stuff? And you were like, oh my gosh, and this and this and whatever else? I know you want the people abusing, abusing Diana's son and Diana's son's wife. You want to know this place? Look at yourself. Oh my, look at yourself. Now, who's this next one? Sue Q. Harry is not, listen, listen, once again, define hero for me. Because you and I may have different definition. I think we definitely have different, different definition. Is people really stupid, you know, Antonio? I can't believe the things these people really stupid, right? Marisha. Okay, Marisha, you know, no. Marisha, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, were you, were you wrote confused me a little bit. But listen, let me tell you something. You don't need to feel no pity for Harry, you know. That man is doing really, really good. That man is having the best life. He has a beautiful wife. He has two beautiful children. He's doing well. People are recognizing the hard work that man has put in all his life. Being treated like, I don't know, like a slave before. Now let me tell you something else now, Marija. Or Marija. You need to stop with this nonsense. Because I'm sure you are a lady of a certain age. And ladies of a certain age, you know, we should know better. We should absolutely know better. Why are you bringing out this hate and you feeling pity for him? You know, the only thing the man wants to make it with a man wants. The man wants to be left alone. You should go tell the king and all the other people to leave that man alone. The man left that island. He left that island. And that island doesn't want to let him go. Ah, these people, every single day they write all this nonsense about the man and his wife. Ed need to leave those people alone. Now, you, you, should do, you should absolutely agree with me. Answer to agree with me. Because where are you getting all this nonsense from? From them, every single day, they talk, they talk, they talk. All they have to talk about is Harry and Meghan, Harry and Meghan, Harry and Meghan. Talk about... Talk about little one. She said she has cancer. Talk about her. You know, Antonio, you must have a really strong constitution, you know. 
because how you put up with all this nonsense? How do you people put up with all this nonsense? These ignorant people, right? Le Jesus. I may okay. Who's the next one? Okay, Patricia Hennessy. Oh, Hennessy. Girl, me like the Hennessy. Me like Hennessy, you know. But not too much. Where you wrote? Let me see. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus, help me. Girl, you stupid. You sound like someone who can't hold two pats at the same time. A, she wants to know if he get paid to do, to do this stuff. I don't think he gets paid, but my, you believe it? Can you believe it, Patricia? He has to put up with all this nonsense and people like you viking all this nonsense and the buyer doesn't get paid. Let me tell you something about Patricia. You need to stop this nonsense. Okay, you need to stop it, Patricia. You have a nice name in every gang. Last name, I love it. Hennessy. You mean, uh, look, were you there? When they when the man was in the military, were you there? Were you right next to him? So you 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 know that he didn't do anything. You know that he didn't. W Listen, Patricia, you're you're sounding really stupid, like really really stupid. You need to like I don't know, gal, like stop this nonsense, stop writing on people's stuff. Oh my God, you people, go get yourself a man. Or maybe a woman and something. Go get yourself a man or a woman who cares. Be happy. You know, with all this nonsense happening in the world, you never know. Today we are like, tomorrow we dead. Stop this nonsense. Hey, Antonio, I think I can't do any of this more, okay? Maybe I can't. These people are at customer patience. We all have a choice. We all have a choice in what we believe in. We all have a choice in the actions we take. We all have a choice. We all have a choice to contribute positivity into this world. We all have a choice to contribute negativity. We all have a choice to wake up and say, today I'm going to do good. Or wake up and say, today I'm going to continue to harass. I'm going to continue to bully. We all have a choice. Perhaps the only thing we don't have a choice about is that we will all die. Each and every one of us. It's a cycle. Circle of life. If you were born and given life, you have an expiry date. You will die. None of us really know when our expiry date is, but it will happen for sure. On your dying bed, if you have that privilege, will you look back at your existence, your actions, and think about all the good you did, all the good. And you may think and justify the hate you put out in the world, the name calling, the harassment, the spreading of misinformation. You may think that that was you doing good. Well, I wish you good luck with that. And I hope that on your dying bed, it's not the time when you realize that you are just an agent of the devil. As we close today's episode, let's take a moment to reflect on the Hence, hatred directed at Harry and Meghan. What have they done to any of you? What have they done to you personally, I ask? What does your hate say about you? By spreading this visceral and, and false narrative, you are actively contributing to the deterioration of civil society. We pride ourselves on being the most intelligent species. Yet, we often behave with such foolishness and cruelty towards one another. Think, 
Think about what is lacking in your life that makes Hayden on Harry and Megan so thrilling for you. Why are you so willing to believe and propagate falsehoods rather than seek the truth? This fixation on negativity not only harms those you target, but also corrodes your own well-being. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Holding on to such bitterness affects your mental health. Fostering anger and resentment that can only consume you. Ask yourself, what does this relentless negativity achieve? Does it bring you peace? Does it bring you joy? More likely, it fuels a circle of misery and dissatisfaction. Listen, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your life. It's your life until you don't have it anymore. It's yours. You have options. You always have a choice. But I'll say it. It's time to be better, to rise above this pettiness and contribute positively to society. Focus on spreading kindness and understanding better than tearing other people down. Listen, by choosing love over hate, you can only help create a better world, but also find greater happiness and fulfillment in your own life. I said this to you. What if everything you say, what if it was all true? What if I stand before you and I say, you're right. You're absolutely right. Every point, everything, you are absolutely right. Now what? Now what? What do you do? What do you do? Because beyond these things that you are doing, let me tell you, Harry and Meghan, the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex, they will continue living their life, a very happy one, filled with the blessings of wealth and health, happiness, enjoyment, and you are stuck in this cycle. Where is your life going? How much more of it you're willing to waste on someone that doesn't even know your name? You don't know mine either. But my mission, my mission, is to do my very best to bring some love, some joy, to elevate people that I see that have philosophies that I believe in, that I can relate to, and uplift those. Or people I can look at and learn something of how I can be a better human being for the time that I've got on this God blessed place called Earth. I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best. I don't know when your time expires. I don't know when mine expires. One person knows it. I leave you with just that thought. 
if you are blessed and lucky enough to have the time to be on your bed and know that your time is about to be expired how do you look back at your life how do you celebrate it how do you dignify this precious thing that you are given what did you use it for what did you spread what did you say how many people did you make happy this world we all need to foster a culture of compassion of respect the world desperately needs it we all need it you need it i need it i wish you all the best in your journey and i hope i pray that your journey is not felt with regret but that is your decision to make it's not mine take care of yourself i wish you all the best each and every one of you thank you for watching thank you for being part of this community thank you i love you all be kind to yourself be kind to your loved ones be kind to that stranger you may meet or strangers you may meet along your path until we speak again